Professor Harsh Pant, Vice President, uh, Foreign Policy at the Observer Research Foundation, and also a professor at King's College in London, joins me. Uh, we also hope to be joined by Leela Ponappa, former Deputy National Security Advisor. But first to you, Professor Pant. How do you see this Indo-Pacific economic framework actually working? Is it simply a U.S.-led effort to counter China's economic cloud that at the moment is really symbolic and doesn't really have the muscle to challenge the Chinese economic cloud in the region? Well, certainly I think, uh, Rajdeep, the unveiling of that is a step forward because we have been hearing this for a long time now that... Uh, the economic engagement of the U.S. in the Indo-Pacific is something that was of, a, of, of some concern to both uh, the well-wishers of the U.S. Uh, as well as the allies and partners of the U.S. in the Indo-Pacific. We knew that uh, the Trump administration had taken a hardline stance against uh, China, but in the process they had withdrawn from the Indo-Pacific economic mainstream. So there was a lot of concern that uh, America is not in the economic game and America's partners and allies you know, uh, had been uh, putting pressure on the U.S. to do something about it. Now what the Biden administration has tried to do is to come to a point where they are linking this, uh, you know, this Indo-Pacific economic framework with the domestic priorities. The, one of the most important statements uh, from their perspective has been that this is linked to American middle classes, American workers, that it is going to help them. Now, uh, I think uh, they are trying to generate domestic support for it, and they are trying to look at it in the strategic context of coming back into the economic game in the, in the Indo-Pacific. So as of now, the, what, whatever is available, it's very sketchy. But uh, if it evolves in the right direction, then it has enormous potential as well, both to counter China, yeah, both to counter China as well as to do something more substantive about the economic imbalance in the region. You know, the reason I asked you this, Professor Pant, is as of now, the IPF won't include any market taxes commitments, uh, such as lowering, uh, it, it won't include market access, doesn't include commitments like lowering tax driver, uh, tax barriers. It seems more of an administrative arrangement led by the United States. Will it evolve, in your view, to something substantial in the years ahead, given that there is a lot of friction between these countries when it comes to tariffs? I do believe because, you know, uh, we are in an age of uh, loose coalitions. We are in an age where uh, globalization is being looked at very differently. I think the, the whole uh, approach to trade liberalization is, uh, is something very unique today where we are talking of trust, which Indian Prime Minister also talked about, both um, among the trading partners as well as those who want to construct a supply chain. So I think there is a sense that the new kinds of economic arrangements that are going to come out are going to be different. And we are looking at uh, some of the arrangements that India itself is entering into. Uh, but certainly this is a loose administrative arrangement which talks about trade, but it also talks about, uh, you know, several other things. Decarbonization, uh, standards of, uh, uh, you know, health and, and uh, working abilities. It talks about infrastructure connectivity. It talks about uh, climate change and green energy transitions. So there are a number of factors which perhaps give you a more comprehensive arrangement in the, in, in the Indo-Pacific, rather than simply looking at trade and investment, which of course are important. But I think given the way global economy is evolving, uh, I, a, a number of the countries feel uncomfortable with the way China has used trade and investment, uh, perhaps as tools of economic coercion. So I think this is a this is slightly better way to look at the, the arrangement, the fluidity in the relationships, as well as to respond to some of the challenges that still remain very, very uh, in nascent at this stage. You know, Leela Ponappa, who joins us now, former ambassador, do you really believe India stands to benefit from this? Uh, because India has been very ambivalent in the past about building stronger trade relations uh, with countries that do not, in a way, ensure reciprocity. We did not even join RECEP. Uh, we, we've stayed away from trade uh, alliances in the past. Suddenly now, becoming part of this agreement, U.S.-led, do you believe India stands to benefit? I think any uh, discussion on trade and the widening of trade relationships is something that India should participate in. And it's a good thing that the kind of ambivalence and hesitation that India has shown in past years, I should really say decades, going back to when APEC uh, started, uh, is now uh, sort of seeing some kind of a transformation. Because this is really part of the evolving economic architecture, uh, part and parcel really of the security architecture, but with an economic focus. 
that is now taking shape. It's a little too soon to see too many things in it. But mm -hmm. what was very interesting was in the statement that the White House put out, quite apart from the Quad members, there were seven of 11 ASEAN members who had uh, uh, signed on. And I think this in itself goes to show that countries are exploring avenues, trying mm -hmm. to see how in this changing circumstance uh, they can try to gain benefits. I wouldn't know. Is it gain benefit or just contain China? The is devil it, is in the is detail. It, is it, the devil is in the detail and the detail has yet to be addressed. Right, which is precisely it. It seems at the moment an administrative arrangement. Is it primarily in your view to contain China, worried about China's growing economic clout, but still not sure how exactly uh, this clout is to be contained? I think certainly that's one of the factors. In a way, it's a kind of resurrection of uh, the TPP, which uh, uh, Obama propagated and uh, Trump then slashed down. Uh, mm -hmm. Meanwhile, RCEP has taken shape with India having participated in the negotiations and then mm -hmm. at the last minute having said it would not join. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I do believe that, uh, you see, China is trying to set up alternative institutions, obviously with itself at the center of it, whether as, whether as, a, as a military hegemon or as an economic hegemon. Mm -hmm. But uh, this is an attempt really to broaden it. And what I found also particularly interesting in the PM statement was the use of the word flexible. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't think there was any elaboration on it, but I think the idea was really that the door is open for those who would play by the rules. This is still exploratory. I would call it more than an administrative arrangement. I would say it is really a statement of intent. Mm -hmm. How it takes shape remains to be seen. Let me give uh, uh, Professor Pant also a final word on that. As I said, India has been un ambivalent in the past about building strong trade alliances in the region, in East Asia in particular. Do you see this as a, as a change again in India's stance and India that's now finally beginning to relook at its objectives? Yes, to a certain extent, I think India cannot shy away from the fact that uh, it, it has to, uh, if it has to become a responsible stakeholder in the economic architecture in the Indo-Pacific, then something concrete has to be given uh, to its partners, to, to like-minded partners that India is developing relationships with. Uh, but I think this particular format also helps India into integrating uh, in, into the larger Indo-Pacific economic architecture, because this is not about, as, as you were saying, this is not about tariff barriers or reducing them or market access. This is about much broader principles and along those principles, if India is able to operationalize them along with the Quad partners and the other partners that are joining the, the economic uh, framework uh, partnership, I think there is potential there for India also to become an integra integral part of the economic architecture in the region. But certainly India needs to do much more and much more aggressively on the, on the economic and trade front. Okay, so it's a small step forward in a sense, but a step in the right direction at the moment. As uh, Ambassador Ponappa pointed out, the devil could well lie eventually in the details. Remember, the big quad meeting takes place tomorrow. We'll track that too in Tokyo. For now, Leela Ponappa, Professor Pant, appreciate you joining me here on the news tonight today.